Come on, Ethan. You're not gonna fall, man. Portugal is still a relatively unknown climbing destination. I think it's often overlooked because it's completely surrounded by Spain, which is obviously a well-established climbing mecca. You know, France is, is pretty close to. I think that the sport climbing at Cabo Espichel is, is phenomenal. I think it's world-class. This is our this is our forest home, our tiny tiny home in the forest here. It's 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 cute. It's kind of just one big room. Bathroom. <laughs> Good. Glad you got the bathroom in there. Yeah. That's where the magic happens. This is our front yard. Here we have our rental that's covered in dirt and mud. Our hammock that we haven't gotten in yet because we're scared of bugs and spiders. Oh, spiders! Bug free. Wow. I think. Yeah. You gonna get in there? Yeah. Should I? Yeah. Should get I in. It the, get in. Get on in. Oh. Okay. Tour is over. <laughs> Cabo Espichel is one of the prettiest places I've ever climbed. It's just like a really dramatic setting. You know, it's this cape at the end of this peninsula, and when you're standing near the end of the cape, like near the lighthouse, you know, there's just all this vertical relief down into the ocean. Whoa! Dude. 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 This drop. This is... Oh, God, I feel slightly unwell. <laughs> standing the, on the, the cliffs plunge hundreds of feet straight down to the water and it's it's just like breathtaking views everywhere you look. Below Cabo Espichel there's this stretch of cliff that has all these epic limestone caves and one of the areas is called Mio Mango which is where we've been climbing more than anywhere else. We're here at our, our local cafe, which is the the meetup spot for for climbers. Ready for some pastry. I see the one. Hola, bon dia. Can, can I have a decaf oat milk cortado, please? We don't speak Portuguese. Yes. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Soon though, for sure. Des des cafeinado. Discafeinado. Discafeinado. Thank you. We are waiting for our friend Tiago, who is like a gym owner in Lisbon and also one of the most prolific local climbers and route developers at the, the seaside crags here at Mongo. He's bolted a lot of stuff. And yeah, super nice guy, super helpful. And we're just, we're just waiting for him to show up with our rope. Look at this rock star. <laughs> How are you? All good? good? How are you? Good boy? Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good Sick. Wow. All right, thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice Perfect. color. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Blind, by the way, but... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? But uh, I see it's blue. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think we'll probably go... I might just use the bathroom and then maybe we'll go down. 
Great, yeah. Great. Yeah. I think it's gonna be great for yeah, Edgar and for Filipinos. So sure. Yeah. Yesterday it was full of chol. Full of chol. Nice. The approach to Mio Mango is very steep. It's like a, a descent, a straight down descent with some really steep switchbacks. Katie's favorite approach ever. I have anxiety today. Normally Ethan climbs below me and it makes me... I spot her. He spots me on the, it's like a death spot. Ah. And then the descent gets so steep that they've installed these titanium rungs that you, you know, that you use to, to descend down to the actual, like, crag base. It's one of the steepest, you know, most technical descents to any sport crag I've ever seen. The hang and the sort of commute between sectors at Mio Mongo is very unique. To get from one cave to another, you like zip line across these uh, steel cables. Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Holy shit! It's it's like a place where you really have to like be able to read the conditions of the ocean. If you end up at Mio Mango on a day when the waves are yeah. big and on a day when the tide is rising and the swell is building, there is a risk that, you know, a huge wave could come and just like sweep you off of a off of a shelf. So yeah, you really have to know what you're doing down there. Adam Astor is an incredible 8D sport route at Mio Mungo. I think it's probably like one of the proudest lines at the crag. And it goes up this really beautiful headwall that gets like golden evening light and just is just such beautiful climbing, really cool bouldery moves on small holds and really sustained. It was definitely one of the most memorable climbs I did in Portugal. So right after I sent Adam Ashtor, I blade Tiago on his send go on the same route. And it was really cool to see him climb it after he'd been working on it for seven years. It was like, you know, he released all this emotion and it was just amazing to see. Like, I mean, that you don't get to see that every day, someone sending their seven year project. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god, what? yes! What? Wow! <laughs> Woo! Seven years? Seven years. Damn! Yeah. Oh my god. I'm very happy. Tiago's jumbo love right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Bro! Good job, congrats. Ready for another seven year project. Nice. <laughs> What's it gonna be next? I think one of the most special things about coming to Portugal and climbing with all the locals is feeling like we've really been embraced by the community here. David, you're now in the film. <laughs> and that we've like kind of become family with them. Diet of a pro climber. We went to 
Miyamongo today, and I finally put my draws on the Andre Narish 9A Filipinos. And it was a little bit humid, and it was in the sun. Humid and in the sun, somehow both were happening simultaneously, but Ow. it's very it's very cool. Um, I'm psyched to try it again, but I need to I need to steal some beta from Seb Boin. Seb Seb Boin. I need to steal some beta from from 9C Seb. We don't actually have cell service or Wi-Fi in our tiny Airbnb, so we're gonna go and hotspot to our phones right outside the Airbnb in the car, AKA the internet cafe. Did that. Okay, so he gets the knee. He like scoots his fingers out of the way. That's like almost exactly what I tried. Oh, he's knee barring a little higher though. He's like on the hold kind of. I'm impressed. Seb bon. He's Hats an, off. He's an impressive man. He is. <laughs> he's insanely impressive. Okay, so he's got that hold up there. Filipinos is not a super long route. It's probably only 20 meters total in length. And it's very bouldery and technical. It, a lot of the rock is really blocky and um, three-dimensional. So there's a lot of opportunity for like cool body English and knee bars. It was the line that stood out to me most that I was like most psyched to invest energy into coming into the trip. Okay, I'll try Seb's beta. Um, okay, climbing. Okay. Come on. The hardest moves on Filipino come at the fourth bolt, Davis. so pretty low on the climb. There's a pretty difficult boulder problem with kind of the smallest holds on the climb. And um, I would say if I had to give it a grade, it was it's probably like somewhere between V9 and V11 or so. And sure enough, I watched the video of Seb sending Filipinos and he used a knee to crawl through this first boulder problem. So I tried that and I just couldn't make it work. And when I finally gave up on trying to knee bar my way through the boulder problem, I realized that actually just climbing, climbing it like without knees was a lot easier and more straightforward. And I pretty much linked the boulder problem like a second try that way. Okay, take please. And then there's a bit of slightly easier climbing that leads you to some pretty good knee bar rests in this little alcove. Leaving the alcove, there's a little bit of a boulder problem with this amazing like on, dino Nike. move. And then I do like a bat hang rest at the first anchor of the route on this big horn jug, which you know, I mean, a lot of times like bat hangs are kind of gimmicks and maybe they don't always like help you rest, but I actually found this one to be quite helpful. I could take my hands off the wall for like a full 15 seconds or so and then just hang upside down, barely holding onto the wall for another, you know, 20 or 30 seconds. The boulder at the top is quite long and sustained, so you have to have quite quite a bit of energy left over for it. I. I'm obviously using all the knee bar tricks, but I'm also using a crack glove on my right hand because I found Beta to make use of this decent hand jam at the top. I'm pulling out all the stops for this for this route. I got I got a bat hang in there, I got seven knee bars, and I got a hand jam with a crack glove. And meanwhile Andre Narish is just just hanging on, just climbing it like normal. Early. So early. Early bird gets the waves, though. Oh, baby. 
baby. Give it to us. Yes. Yes. We come on the sloop, John D. My grandfather and me. Around Nassau town we did roam. Drinking all night. Drinking all night. Got into a fight. Got into a fight. Well, I feel so break up. I want to go home. I want to go home. Hoist up the jumbo. H core. Did you film that wipeout? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ocean was humbling today. It was big. It was very it big. It got so much bigger when I got in too. And I was just like out there just trying to survive. and then you're like tapped to like a crimp and then again to a jug but even after you get the jug on the lip like there's like no feet basically yeah. <laughs> you gotta put your feet to the right yeah i think so yeah i'm sure you won't fall if you grab this jug on filipinos ah, i figured out a ton of good beta yeah. like right away even my first few trips up the route and i thought wow this is coming together super fast like i'm gonna do this route i'm gonna do this yeah, route fast top. like i could get to the red point crux on my next try probably, so that's exciting. And then, sure enough, like on my first red point attempts, I climbed all the way from the ground to the very last bolt on the route. Come on. Bora, bora. Right after that, these storms came, it started raining. Another day, another rain. Surprise, surprise. Monday. Rain. Tuesday. Rain. Wednesday. Light rain. Thursday. Rain. Friday, light rain. Saturday, light rain. And then after the huge seas calmed down, it was super humid, the rock was like unbelievably wet. We're here at Mio Mango, and it's wet again. All of the rock that isn't in the sun is wet. When I first started trying Filipinos, we had a ton of time left in the trip. And then after this period of time where I just couldn't try the route for like two weeks, I started to stress out a little bit. Time is, time is running out and looking at the forecast there are not a lot of great condition days left maybe none <laughs> but i was like you know i'm already falling at the last bolt i shouldn't need more than you know a few more tries to send it but then i fell again and again and again right in the same section i would make it half a move or a move further every day but it just wasn't coming together nearly as quickly as I thought. Oh look, my blood's already on the ground. <laughs> it's okay, leaving your battle, battle marks. Fuck. 
I'm, I'm looking into changing my ticket, so looking at my confirmation email. I'm pretty sure I can't, but I'm just gonna see. I want more time. Baby's stressed about sending the proj. 258.40 US dollars to leave three days later. How much money is sending worth? How much money is sending worth? That's a very good question. How much money is more opportunities to send worth? There's no nothing's guaranteed in this life. Um... Projecting on a trip can go from exciting to stressful in a hurry when you start to realize that you're running out of time and when you start to add up, you know, all the energy and time and like money that you've spent on a trip in with the singular goal of achieving this one route, you know, it just, it can start to feel like there's a lot riding on, on this success or failure. Like I'm bleeding now. We're, we're in the shit now. And I got this thing under my nail. I'm trying to stay calm and not stress out too much and just trying to cultivate an attitude of, of curiosity and learning because trying to hang on to an attitude of success versus failure just is just way too stressful and just feels like way too much pressure. The rock in the shade does feel pretty like slimy, pretty like salty and kind of wet to the touch, um, which is obviously not great. So don't have high hopes, but uh, we're here and, uh, and I'm definitely not gonna come down here tomorrow, so I might as well try today, you know? Might as well give it, give it hell. Eventually, after falling like around just above the hand jam or a couple moves above the hand jam, I, I thought, Maybe it's more of a hindrance than it is a help. And I, I tried a variation of the beta that I saw Seb use in the video. Basically just grabbing a pretty juggy like finger lock right below the hand jam um, that you can really just hang on. And as soon as I switched to this finger lock, I kind of knew that would probably make the difference between like sending and not sending. The lesson I learned is sometimes it's better to use fewer tricks, actually. There you go, Bubba. Good luck with that. Come on, monkey. Deep breathing, Ethan. Nice, Bubba. Come on, monkey. Come on, Ethan. Come on, monkey. Come on, Ethan. You got this, Ethan. Come on.
Very nice. <laughs> awesome. when you're counting down the days before you leave. It can be it can be very stressful. It can start to feel like you just really want to tick a box or something. Like you're you're a bit focused on the success. And I think that can that can make you like pretty nervous and pretty stressed. But on this trip I feel like I've actually done a fairly good job of trying to cultivate an attitude of calmer energy, being okay with whatever the outcome is, whatever the eventual outcome is, and also just like following my curiosity of, you know, what it will feel like to be on the route today and what can I learn on the route today. Come on, Ethan. Come on, Baba. You got it, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. almost fell, I saw it here. <laughs> I was like, no way. I then he did it. <laughs> Good job. Now, my time. No, just kidding. I love it here. It's so beautiful. And I think the quantity and quality of established lines, but also just potential new hard lines to do, whether it's sport climbing or deep water soloing. There's just so much and I'm, I'm so inspired by it. I think the fact that it's a little bit more off the beaten path and a little bit less trafficked it also is, is a draw for me, you know? There's not a lot of people coming here, but there's a lot of really inspiring rock here. And yeah, I can't, I can't wait to come back. likes to go across the zip line film, with a book. Yeah. The book falls. It's very casual. 
Good ball, that's great, Hope.